this is an evil screw factory. <laughs> By satisfactory standards, it's pretty small. It's tiny. Um, but I like it. And this is a video about how I designed and built it. Well, it's more about how I designed it. The, I don't really use any fancy building tricks, I don't think. And I'm not going to talk about efficiency or managing power or anything that's like actually useful like that. No, this is just about my ridiculously painful process of designing the totally unnecessary buildings that you can put around your factory. Um, but for fun, I just decided to do that end to end, and that's what this video is. Okay, I need another screw factory, and I want to put it right here. There's a bunch of iron nodes by, by it, and uh, it's connected to this conveyor system that can go to this building, and it can also feed, go over the, the edge here, and goes down through these little skyway things into this cyberpunk-looking building. So I know where the inputs and outputs are all going to be, and uh, I know how big it needs to be. I've, I've done screw factories before. Um, I just now I just need to figure out What's the box going to look like? I did some sketching in my iPad, but I didn't really find anything I loved. All I know for sure is I want it to be kind of evil looking. I've got this vaguely dystopian look going in all my other factories. And I like that, so I want to stick with that. But I think I'm just going to wing it this time. I mean, I'm just so impressed with the new swooping tool and how fast you can just throw down a whole bunch of foundations and delete them and try something new. So I kind of want to see what, instead of designing it first, what if uh, we just use the swooping tool as kind of a way to sketch in real time in, in 3D, see if I can get there that way. But all I know so far is I want the main factory on the right and then like a little entry lobby or something on the left side there. I really have no idea why I give these buildings big entrances and fancy lobbies and things. I'm the only person on the planet. I mean, who's going to come visit it? But, you know. Okay, I'm just gonna doodle or zwoople for a little bit, see what I can come up with. Okay, I think I've got my first idea. I, uh, I just put a little skylight in between the two buildings for fun, and uh, it made me wonder about what if I extended that into a, like a wave across the back? You know, I mean, I just started playing with those new angled uh, glass roof pieces, and uh, you can make a pretty smooth looking sine wave shape uh it kind of contrasts nicely i don't know hmm i'm kind of baffled though about what i would do at the back i mean <laughs> is it is it just like fold around or does it go straight down like how do you how does a wave end <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of more of a straight lines and right angles kind of guy, so forgive me if this is a little, a little like I'm working left-handed, working on curves. I'm going to give it a shot, though. Yeah, what if we just bend it around like that, and uh, now it kind of looks like a starship. I don't know if that's good. Right, let, me, let me flesh this out and see what, see what happens. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it, it's starting to look like a mall, isn't it? <laughs> or an airport, not a factory. I don't know. I gotta say though, I like the, I like the, I like all the sun. I like this big open space. Um, although I was tr thinking it'd be like three floors, it wouldn't be very good for the bottom too. Actually, I'm not even sure I've got room now. Yeah, was this roof a mistake? I'm not sure how I would... Uh, okay, I'm just going to push pause on the roof. Uh, let's think about the other building for a minute. Okay, I got an idea for this one. I want to give it lots of windows. Let's just start carving into it like it's clay. Boom. Yeah, I think I want to scoop out the sides. Make most of the left side's going to be facing the sun, so it should be mostly almost all windows, I think, and this side can have some. Well, let me just explore this window idea for a second. Okay, 
Okay, that's looking pretty cool. This side's going better. Um, but it's still not there yet because I think um, I want the I want those horizontal lines to pop out more. Um, so I can't. I don't think I should put the windows right on the outside. I'm going to inset them. I'll show you how. Uh, use beams. I use beams for that. There might be a better way than this. It seems a little convoluted, but it's working, and so that's what I'm doing for now. Um, I just lay down a beam where I want the inset wall to be, and I just grab, um, you know, like the little wall, plop it down, and then I do the same thing again on top of that wall. The reason for that is it's so that because if I do do that, then I'll end up with the wall at the same at the right height. It'll be on the same grid as everything else. It'll just be in set. Um, but the height will be the same. So then I can, you know, drag these, uh, zoop these walls down to the level of the foundation and it'll line up perfect. Kill that. And there's in there. And then we've got a foundation to work off of. And I can, I can use these walls to place the windows at the inside depth, which is what I want. Now, it's a little weird how it hits the edge like that, but uh, if I line them with yet more beams, I'm telling you, beams are awesome. They can do anything with those new, it's, you know, it's one of those new things they add. I don't even know if Coffee Stain realized how powerful these little beams are going to be. Anyway, look at that. So yeah, now now I think it's at the right depth, and I'm just going to blow it out for the rest of them and see, uh, see what I think. All right, that's pretty cool. Put in a floodlight because I'm, I'm working through the night. Um, but here's the thing: I still, I don't think it's gonna. I still don't. It looks like columns of windows instead of rows of windows going back. Um, but I think I have an idea how to fix that. Um, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna make the, the foundation bits. <laughs> these guys. I'm gonna make them a bit wider so they can stick out. I mean, I already pushed the windows in, but now I'm gonna pull those out. And I think that'll do the trick. Oh yeah, this is much better. Yeah, you can't miss the horizontal lines now. Yeah, and once I get a good pattern I like, if I run with it, sometimes that can be the whole personality of the building. In fact, I have an idea about the base I want to try. Okay, I tried my idea, and it's terrible. <laughs> I hate it. Um, you can see what I was doing. I was trying to run with that horizontal line blade thing. But at the base, it the problem is it looks it looks too similar to the other bits, but it's not, it's not the same, and I, it's no good. However, I think there might be a way to salvage it. Uh, the, uh, the general idea, I think, is good. Um, let me try something. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so, uh, these, so these gaps are, like half the height of uh, the smallest foundation because I uh, what I did is it you know I used that weird artifact of the beam inset trick um, but I didn't go the extra step of making it align with the grid vertically so it stayed slightly off uh, but that let me have these narrow gaps and I think that's a lot a lot nicer yeah yep that's it that's our base that's what that's going to be. That's done. Uh, let me just work uh, do the rest of it. Okay. Good news is that on the, for this the lobby side building, actually it's bigger than the lobby now. I might be able to put more in there. Um, some assemblers. But now i got to think about the entrance, and I'm not sure anymore what that's going to be. I had this idea that it would be this sort of big, stocky, mohawk-looking thing, but I can't tell if that still works now or what it looks pretty naked like that oh hmm 
What that have is maybe trying to use these. I found a cool way to make columns that have like a star shape. These new metal pillars that are awesome additions. If you oh, update five edition, um, if you put them on the ground, you can't use the mouse wheel to turn. You it won't rotate. But if you set one down and uh, add to the top and put one on on his brother, then you can rotate it for some reason and you get a lot of control. And then if you take advantage of the soft, it's not a collision, what do they call it? Anyway, you, know, you basically put a column inside another column, 45 degrees off, and it makes this nice little geometric star. And in column form, it's, and it makes these nice flutes. Uh, and it kind of looks like a, a gear, you know, it looks kind of industrial. Um, but, you know, looking at it now, I don't see how that helps me. That was just totally the wrong style. Okay. Nope. I tried straight columns. I don't think that works either. It's got me something. Hmm. Okay, well, I still haven't cracked it, but while I was messing around, I made a huge discovery. Or I think it's huge. Um, look. Look at the seam between this, these two foundations. There are two of them, 45 degrees apart. There's no seam. How's it possible? I didn't think it was possible. Well, it's kind of exciting to me. <laughs> See, the way it makes it work is it's actually not really 45 degrees. It's just a bit off. God, I wish I'd known about that when I was working on the, that big building with chamfered corners. I had to use walls, and I just couldn't get rid of the seams on the sides. Uh, this is but now, smooth, smooth, I mean, it won't work for everything. You have to be willing to deal with living with a little bit of angle there. But for aesthetic, things, like decorative things like this, yeah, it's totally fine. It looks great. Now, seams or no seams, though, I don't think triangles belong on this building. Um, and I'm tired of thinking about this building and its entrance. It's so close. Let me just push pause on this and let's go think about that roof problem again. Oh boy. I mean, looking at it now, I'm pretty happy with the way the, the little narrow building half is looking. But next to it now, this, this wave makes even less sense. You know what I mean? I mean, it just doesn't look like it's even part of the same building anymore. I think we've... Sorry, wave. I like you. Maybe you can help us with some other building, but I'm sorry. Bye. Oh yeah, and that was the right thing to do. I mean, this isn't it, but look, even just deleting the wave and moving the, you know, carrying the horizontal lines across on the base makes it look a lot closer. Okay, I think I know what to do with this entrance thing now. Um, I have an idea. What I want to do, what I wish I could do, is rotate a foundation vertically I need one, that kind of thing for my idea. You can't do that, but what you can do is take these concrete beams, yet another Update 5 edition that I absolutely love, um, and make columns, overlapping columns, whoop up, and then uh, what you've got is, is what it looks like a foundation that's been rotated, but you, know, you can't color these columns like you can the foundations, of course, but I actually like the contrast with this brighter look to the column concrete. Yeah, this is going to be hot. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So the idea is that there's this the front of the building is this really tall um, display. Yeah, this is definitely going to be how we treat the front of the building. That's it, but I'm not sure what yet to put on the display. Snowflakes, not very evil. Eh. I use this background pattern a lot for these like video wall textures. It's really, it's like, it's the best one. I just wish we had more like it, you know? Oh, let me show you a trick you can do with it though. If you take one of the displays, since there's a bunch stacked up on top of each other, and then change the color of that background, you get this kind of, looks like there's a dark 
glass piece over the rest of the texture. That's cool. But yeah, I'm calling it. I think we're good on the... I think this this part of it, this, this tall, thin building, this is done. I wish we had scarier icons for that display, but I guess we're going to go with sarcastic snowflakes. So to finish up the outside, I just want to make the the other part of the building, the right side, the big box, um, feel more like it's part of a set with the one we one I like on the left. Um, we have a lot to work with now, so I don't think it'll take that long. I'm just going to doodle a bit or swoop a little bit more and uh, see what I can come up with. Yeah, yeah, this is it. I think this is the, I think this is the final form. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they look just different enough and just similar enough to feel like a set. Um, the little one seems more important, which is right. That's where the main entrance is. Oh, <laughs> holy crap. I think I just designed my library from college. <laughs> That's weird. It's really weird. God, brains are odd things. But <laughs> if if this is a college library, then it's not an evil screw factory. I mean, don't they ban books in dystopias? Yeah. Well, my brain's fried thinking about that shape of this thing. But I have an idea. It might not take too long. That'll really evil it up. I think. This is an evil screw factory. It is not a library at the University of Arkansas. <laughs> I think it turned out good. I mean, it's nice and distinctive. Um, stands out from the other ones I've done. Um, I haven't finished the inside. Yeah, I mean, the inside's finished. Um, but the factory's still being worked on. Um, uh, start small and you know feel my way to efficiency instead of doing math you know but look the screws are flowing uh, this building turned out bigger than I uh, had originally planned it was just kind of be the entry lobby thing well it's got that but um, there's also room to house a couple of the miners and to add a few assemblers and upper floors too uh, not too bad that was my first attempt designing by Zwoop. Uh, it, I think it definitely took longer, but it was fun. I think I'll, I'm going to do it again. Um, yeah, speaking of, I guess it's it's off to the next one. Infinite list of to-do items for fix-it, you know? Never ends.